Hello there and welcome back to the School of Surgery. My name is Benjamin Baker, I'm an academic junior doctor and I'm delighted to welcome back Miss Arrowsmith, a consultant plastic and reconstructive surgeon with a special interest in hand surgery here in Derby. Today is the first of our four podcasts about suturing techniques and we've been privileged enough to have the opportunity to demonstrate these on cadaveric tissues. These podcasts are aimed at senior medical students and junior doctors as they begin to prepare themselves for a surgical career and the latter podcasts in the series will be useful for core surgical trainees as well. Although we use cadaveric material in our podcasts, there are a wealth of materials retailing that can be used to practice suturing techniques at home and we recommend practicing the techniques which we demonstrate alongside our videos. Today's podcast is going to cover how to handle surgical instruments which we'll be using to suture in theatre. Our learning objectives for this session are to be able to practice safe instrument handling, use forceps and scissors, and to be able to load a suture onto a needle holder. At the end of the podcast, we will also demonstrate the ideal body position to take up while suturing. Handling instruments safely. Handling instruments safely is of paramount importance. You certainly don't want to give a needle stick injury to yourself and it doesn't go down well to needle stick your supervising consultant. Check your instruments or what you've asked for when you receive them and don't always rely on your scrub nurse. Keep your surgical field tidy to avoid suture materials getting caught on instruments you're no longer using. Never handle sharps. Always use the needle holder to take the needle out of its packet and use the forceps to adjust the position of the needle. Always pass sharp instruments between members of the team in a kidney dish. Keep the needle within direct vision, however tempting it is to keep pulling the needle to tighten the suture material as you can contaminate the needle or injure other people outside of your field of view. As always, dispose of sharps in a sharps bin. Instruments. The instruments you'll need for suturing the skin are forceps, suture scissors, a needle holder, and skin hooks or retractors, depending on where you're operating. Forceps. Toothed forceps are the default option for skin. The teeth at the end of the forceps are for holding this firm tissue with a minimal contact area. Some forceps have a milled area for grasping a needle. In non-toothed forceps, the milling travels horizontally and won't hold a needle securely. These forceps are used for tubular structures such as vessels, ureters and friable tissues such as the liver and spleen as they have a larger contact area to distribute the applied force. However, these forceps are more traumatic for tissues as more pressure is required to hold the skin. DeBakey's forceps are non-toothed with vertical milling and will hold a needle as well as being more gentle on the tissues than standard non-toothed forceps. Holding forceps. To hold your forceps, hold them like a pen, not with a power grip. It's more difficult to pick the tissues up if the forceps are held parallel to the tissues. Use your thumb and index fingers to stabilise the forceps. Scissors. Always hold the scissors with the ring finger and thumb through the holes and the middle finger behind for support. Point your index finger close to the fulcrum of the scissors to direct them. Use the tips of the fingers. It's always a good idea to stabilise your hand when you cut. Only open the scissor blades enough to capture the suture. Opening them very widely increases the risk of causing unintentional damage to adjacent tissues. Loading a suture. Never use your fingers. Always hold the needle with the needle holder two thirds of the way along the suture from the tip. Hold the suture in the tip of the needle holder. The tip of the needle used for skin is a cut-in part. The middle part of the needle is rectangular and the base of the needle where it butts up to the suture 
is round as this is where the suture has been crimped into the metal needle. So if you hold the needle at its base where it joins the suture it will rotate round in the needle holder whereas if you hold it two-thirds of the way from the tip on the rectangular part this will prevent rotation. Pick up the needle holder with your thumb and ring finger in the holes and the index finger pointing down the shank to eliminate tremor. When you close the suture holders you should hear a single click so you know you're not putting too much pressure on the junction of the jaws of the needle holder which damages this equipment. If you need to reposition the needle, for example to perform a backhanded suture, use your forceps to hold the needle while you adjust the position of the needle holder. Operative position. It's harder to be accurate and you're more likely to have a tremor if you operate with your hands in mid-air. Always try to operate by resting your hands and ideally your forearms so that there is less of a distance between the tip of your instruments and a fixed point. This gives you greater operative control and reduces your tremor. So to summarise, today we've learnt how to handle instruments in a safe and efficient way while suturing delicate tissues. So join us again here soon on the School of Surgery for some more podcasts. You can also find us on Facebook, but remember to pick the right School of Surgery as there are two. And you can find us on iTunes as well. We look forward to seeing you again.